Hi, it's Jason, Jason's Jungle. I dug up new potatoes yesterday and today I'm going to be canning them. So I've got a smidge under 25 pounds of spuds. That's about 11 and a quarter kilograms. Uh, which isn't too bad going. A lot to eat in is fresh potatoes, so I'm going to be canning them using my pressure canner. And oh, this is what I've got today to can. I might not get all of these done, but there's a fair few. So the first thing to do is just to give them a, a wipe with a dry cloth or dry towel, air uh, paper towel, and get rid of most of the uh, the dried off dust before I give them a proper wash. This isn't going to get rid of all the muck, but the more that I get rid of, the easier it's going to be to wash them. I did remove the green ones that I could find, and the slug eaten ones I could find, but that wasn't that many. Um, so I'll also be looking to see if I can find any with green or slugged uh, skins as I go through them and wipe them off. But you don't want to see me sit here, go through 12 pounds of potatoes, wiping them off. So I'll, I'll do this and I'll get back to you. So my cut spuds have been wiped down. They've come up quite clean, but I'm still going to put them through a proper scrub. Got a sink full of cold water. My scrubber here, so this will help take off the uh, scab and everything. And then I've got a bowl full of cold water which I've added into um, into it some lemon juice to acidify it to stop the potatoes going brown once they've ended up being cut. Okay, I've managed to uh, clean and chop them. So I'm now draining off all that water. And here we have a washing up bowl full of chopped spuds. I'm just going to Here, give them a little jig just to make sure everything's off them. Then I'll put them into the pan instead for me to be draining pan. Now, this pan. I can't get the full amount in, so I'm going to have to cook them in two batches. Which means that when the second batch is getting cooked, I'll be bottling up the first batch. Now I only have to put these spuds on because I've I've halved them and quartered them, and they're small. I only need to put them on for a few couple of minutes. Uh, so about two minutes uh, boiling should do. But of course, you've got to bring the water up to the boil first. So I'll just fill this up. So I've got my pan on, I've got water in it, and that's been heated up. And now I just want to drop these in. Do it gently. And then I can top it up so that the water's above the top of these. So I've got a hot kettle here. And then I'll also get some fresh water on top of it. I'll bring them up to the boil and then I'll start counting from there. Once the potatoes are boiling, I just want to show you what I'm going to be using today for the first time. These are Tatla reusable canning lids. So they come with, instead of the metal lid, they come with a plastic lid like this and a ring that fits on there. Now the regular metal lid 
you throw away after you've used it. Once you open the can, it's it's not usable anymore. With these, you can clean them, sterilize them again, and use them again. So um, it's the first time I've used these, and there's been times if you in the lockdown when getting uh, rings, uh, lids, uh, disposable lids were quite hard. You know they were in short supply and the, the prices went up. So I thought. I'll give these a go. They're a lot more expensive than the regular lids, but it might be useful to have a few of these in just in case. So I'm giving them a go. So I'll pull these, cover them with hot water, just to sterilize them a bit. They are going to be in the pressure canner for 35 minutes. And that means that they'll be sterilized as they're cooking. So you don't really need to sterilize them you know they're being washed and cleaned but i'm just going to pop them in just to start them off that's hot so this has been boiling for about two minutes i'm going to turn the gas off and take this out and let it drain so this drain is separate so i'm going to carefully lift it up so it doesn't act like a plunger to all the way that way water can come out the bottom take it across to the sink and tip it into a container. So that's those parboiled. And now I can fill this up with the next lot. Just carefully lower these into the pan. The water's still hot. Just under the surface. I can turn these on and start to get up to temperature. I've already got the pressure can up on. I've got three litres in the bottom of that, which is how much you need to have in it. These are three. So with three litres in there, that's the amount I'm bringing it up to temperature. So when I put hot jars in with hot food, you know, because it's got to be hot packing, so it won't need to go on and uh, take too long to heat up. So now, once that's cooking and getting up to temperature to boil, I will start bringing the jars out. So I've got most of my jaws out. I've still got a few in there, a couple of spares in case. And now I'm going to start filling up the jaws. So I could put salt in, but that's just an optional. What I prefer to do is leave salt out of the things I can if I can. Does that make sense? And then I'll put salt in when I come to use them. These jars have been in a hot oven. You may not be able to tell by that, but yes, they have. So what I'll do is I'll get these up. And I want to get them so that there's half an inch head space, which means below this level where the screw is. So I'll take a couple of those out. Once I've got a bit of liquid in, which will be basically hot water from the kettle, they may settle down a bit once I jiggle them. Put 
because I'll be poking around a little bit in a minute with me uh, the bubbler which will help them settle a bit more Looks like I may have more than one car load I will take nine jaws and we'll fill these up and just give them a little shake and that's opened up a lot more space there that's why I cut these up when you jiggle them like that you can get more in so I'll just give them all a little jiggle Base. More potatoes in. I'll finish these off and then I'll come back when I've got the water going. So I'm going to be topping up to just below the jaws where the screw is. Then to debubble it, I'll go around the sides. This will get rid of any air gaps, but it will also help to pack these in. To make sure there's no spaces around there. So now it's time to clean the rims with a bit of vinegar. That's just to make sure there's nothing sticky on there, nothing left on, no bits of potato or detritus. It makes it easier for the thing to stick. <clears throat> and then I'll put the lids on. Okay, so the lids, I need the white plastic bit and the red rubber bit. So the rubber just slips onto the plastic. I'll turn this upside down, pop it on there, and take the ring, and I do it so that it's finger tight. So you're using the tips of your fingers, not your whole hand. And I'll do that with the rest of them.
now. Now it's time to move these from here into here. So just one at a time, pop them into the hot water that's in there. And once I get the, the full lot done, I can put this onto the cook for 35 minutes when it gets up to temperature. And it's going to be 10 pounds weight. So that's the main pipes in there. That's the capacity of this kind of. Now I just need to put on the lid. Now there's an arrow here, an arrow on the handle here that tells us where to line them up, and then I just twist, and then turn it on. So what I now have to do is let it so that it's heated up so that it starts to be a constant vent of steam. Then I wait for 10 minutes and I put the weight on. Now these are the weights. You have by itself, it's five pound. You then put the first weight on, it makes it 10 pound. And the third weight weighs 15. Now I need 10 pounds, so I need to have two on but I don't put it on just yet. I've got to wait till it's been vent and steam for 10 minutes. And here, there's a little valve. Now that will pop up once the steam starts to build up and it will float on the steam. And that stops this from opening when it's still pressurized or it's still hot inside. So when it comes to let it cool, I can't open it until that is dropped down. Hopefully you'll be able to see two things here. You should hopefully see there's a, a lot of water vapor coming out here. That's a vent group. That's basically saying that it's replacing the atmosphere inside with steam. And that's been happening for the last 10 minutes. Second thing you can see this. It's popped up. That's floating on the steam inside. So that's saying, you know, it's full of steam, it's hot, and you can't open this now. So what I've got to do now is I'm going to take this. I'm just going to pop that over there. It's got one ring on it, which means it's at 10 pounds. Now these have to cook for 35 minutes, but it won't start the timer yet. What I have to do is wait for the pressure to build up. And I know that's built up because this will start rattling. So it will be going like that all the time. And once that happens, I can turn the heat down a little bit. And then, as long as it's rocking, it's okay. And then I'll start the timer for 35 minutes. Now we can see that it's rocking by itself. That means it's up to pressure and I can start the timer. As you can see, it's still rocking. And the alarm has just gone off saying it's 35 minutes is up. So now I can turn the temperature off. And I have to wait for the cool down. So I don't take that weight off. I'll leave that on for cool. And I know it's cool because this would have dropped right way down again. Now if you listen, you can hear the kitchen getting quieter and the rattle is getting slightly less. So here I have my 18 jars of potatoes canned. This is the first batch, which as you can see has come out quite nicely. But the second batch I had an issue with. Now you can see they've broken down and went flowery and started to turn to mashed potato. That's fine, I can still use it. It's just that the reason I'm sure this happened was because um, I overcooked them before I put them in the canner. 
whilst I was bottling these up, I had these potatoes cooking. And then once these were in the, the canner, getting processed, I put these in the oven to keep warm. And that meant they kept cooking because they were still warm. So although some of them aren't too bad, a lot of them have basically went and broken up into mashed potato. So I will use them, they'll be fine. Now all I've got to do is make sure that the seals are done. So I'll take a jar, I will take off these rings. You don't store these rings with them. And what I've now got to do is hold it by the, the lid, lift it up. Yep, that seems to be fine. That's given me, I can lift it up with, without touching the jaw. So that's sealed. So I'll just check all the other ones. Because if you, what I had to do when I took, took these out of the, uh, the can, I, did, I thought I videoed it. Turned out I didn't press record. But when these came out the canner, I let them stand for about three minutes and then I tightened these rings down, which is what the instructions say to do. That made sure that they got a good grip when they cooled down. <coughs> so, apart from my little mess up with the second batch, which I will learn from, I think it's been quite successful. And I'll have potatoes for a while. So thanks for watching, um, click the like, click subscribe and I'll see you on my next video.